Hello and welcome to Golf News kicking back where the big news tonight is Belgium have been knocked out of the World Cup at the group stage as Croatia have progressed at their expense following a nil-nil draw tonight. Belgium went into the game knowing that they had to win, otherwise their World Cup campaign was going to be all over. And the, the match has literally just finished, Sham, and I've got to say it was another really tepid Disappointing performance from Belgium. They looked leggy, they looked slow, they looked lacklustre. There was just nothing going on. And, uh, I mean, they've been really disappointing through the whole tournament in this Group F, which really, I mean, had you looked at that group, teams like uh, Morocco were in there and Canada, you would have expected that uh, it would have been Belgium and Croatia to go through. But in the end, Morocco have topped the group and uh, Belgium are out. But are you surprised considering the way they've been playing? We've mentioned this before. They've been really, they've been... Very disappointing, haven't they? Absolutely. They didn't play like uh, the world number two team in the world. I mean, what we saw was a pathetic performance all through the tournament. And even today, I think maybe except for the last 10 minutes, uh, they looked completely out of sorts. They were struggling to keep up with Croatia. And uh, Lukaku's uh, in, uh, incredible misses, three incredible misses, actually. I mean, that tells the sorry tale of uh, Belgium's performance. Yeah, Satish, I mean, tonight, uh, Lukaku, who you, you can normally trust to put yes. those particular chances away, they were literally just a couple of yards out. He had come on uh, as a substitute. We knew he had come in, uh, into the tournament with an injury. He wasn't completely match fit. Uh, but the first chance, he had a header which a, uh, normally Lukaku in form would have tucked it away, but it hit the crossbar. And then after that, like Sham says, in the last 10 minutes, I think I counted like four chances. I mean, there were all, you know, anybody should have really scored those, regardless Actually, of his I top think striker not, like Lukaku. Not even a couple of feet away, isn't it? It should be a bread and butter for the... everybody. Absolutely. I mean, uh, I mean, but the thing is, you can't rely... Or, you know, a couple of half chances at the end to get yourself through. As Sham and I have just said, they've been a very disappointing team in this tournament. Not just this tournament, they've been disappointing for a while. And because they've got a very old team in there, haven't they? Exactly, uh, Imran. And this is supposedly the golden generation, isn't it, of Belgium football. Yeah. And again, uh, I think uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, that, that's just my thought. Uh, uh, if Hazard had come in a bit early, maybe because he, in the last 10 minutes when he came in, he brought in some... Uh, uh, energy, isn't it? Yeah, even Hazard, to be honest, looks like a stone overweight. This is Sham, a very old squad. You know, De Bruyne is 31. Okay, Lukaku's 29, but even he looks like he's uh, looking at he's towards the end of his career already. He looks very heavy these days, leggy. Uh, Van Tongen's 35. Uh, it's, a, it's an old team now, so I mean, it's going to have to be a huge clear out there, isn't there? That, absolutely. And Lukaku especially, I was looking up the, uh, his uh, stats here. He's just played 38 minutes before this, today's game. You know, uh, since, that is since August. Since August till today, he's just played 38 minutes. So what you saw was the rust flying everywhere. Not just that, he's off late, he's not, not been in a good nick even before he was injured. I mean, he is not the kind of Lukaku which we have known. And actually, I think to today's performance uh, really shows that he is really his reflex are pretty bad. Like you know that the ball with uh, he could have easily chested in. I know the ball is swerving in, but even then, the Lukaku of old would have just put uh, flop that in. And I mean, it looks like his he is career is pretty much over. I think in at least top flight level at least. I think there's a lot of players uh, whose careers, for, for sure, in the national uh, team are for sure over. I've just uh, seen uh, Roberto Martinez give his uh, post-match uh, interview, and he's uh, surprisingly said that they can leave with their heads held high. I mean, uh, this has come as a real shock. I mean, they've had a really poor tournament, Satish. I mean, yeah. this isn't a team that can be holding their heads high at all. They should be embarrassed by how they've done. Correct. Correct. Absolutely, uh, Imran. I think uh, the way they, they finished, they should have... They should have probably topped the group, isn't it? They, they were such a wonderful team and the players, you name it, they, they play across all the leagues and uh, they are so good. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, that I, I, I feel uh, uh, maybe, you know, like they missed a trick like uh, like France or somebody where they brought in some youngsters. I think Belgium did not blood in youngsters at a regular interval. Maybe 
Uh, is that the reason is what we need to check? Uh, maybe it could be the reason as well. That, that's absolutely right, Satish. There was a lo big opportunity there for Roberto Martinez, who's actually, this is his contract uh, runs out after this tournament. So probably today, in the next hour or so, we're going to be hearing that he's resigned. He's, he's, he's going to step down. For sure, I don't think the Belgium FA are going to renew his contract after this disappointing tournament. But there was a chance there for them to, you know, blood some youngsters, get some younger blood into the team, as we've seen many other national teams do. But for some reason, Martinez decided, you know, just to stick with that old guard and they have let him down extremely badly. Uh, we mentioned, Satish just mentioned there that uh, they should have been top of the group. I believe they should have done. But surprisingly, Sham, top of the group is Morocco. <laughs> I mean, did we ever yeah. expect that to happen? This is a real surprise. They uh, edged past, um, who did they play today? They beat um, uh, Canada 2-1. Canada. Uh, there was two defensive mistakes from the goalkeeper, I have to say. Uh, for the very first goal, uh, he came out. He didn't clear the ball, and uh, and the second one, he it was a, it was beaten at his near post. But Sham, did we really expect Morocco to top the group? Second, maybe, but uh, seven points from three games, they've been really good. I mean, if you had, uh, told me that well, Morocco would top the group at the beginning of the tournament, no, I would have laughed at you. <laughs> but the, the but the the last two matches Morocco played was they played out of their skins really, so and the, there was so much of passion and energy in their game. I, I mean, uh, even yesterday we were sure that they would beat Canada today, but of course those those two stupid mistakes. Yes, the first one I I, didn't, I don't know what the goalkeeper was doing. Milan Morian. Was it? Did he try to pass? Did he try to kick it away? I really don't know. I looked at it, it was a gift shop. Times. Christmas early Christmas gift he gave away. <laughs> I so that I think I, even the second goal that is to his yes. near post. I mean, you don't get let in goals like that. That means he has not covered it properly. He didn't cut off the angle, man. And at this level, you don't give away those kind of goals. That is two gifts to Morocco. But I think. Uh, Morocco deserved to win. Only Canada uh, desperately searched for the equalizer late in the game, but I, I think that was too late in the game. Even the only goal they scored but came by, by an own goal, really. So, yeah, in the first half. half. So, so, Morocco thoroughly deserved to go through. And uh, just to go back on your point, uh, sorry about that. I just need to say this simply because you guys mentioned about the youngsters part. So you look at Croatia, that to me, the man of the match there was a Croatian youngster, Josko Guardiol. My God, the amount of interceptions he made is mind-boggling. He is just 20 years old. And I, to me, he is the must savior for Croatia. And of course, the Croatian midfielder, Matteo Kovacic, another, another good find, really. Kovacic is a solid player, and they've still got Modric there. He's 37, but he doesn't look like he's 37. He knows exactly when to make those uh, those bursting runs. He knows when to conserve the energy. He can still pick out a pass, and uh, they're ticking along quite nicely. But Satish, now look, Morocco, this is the first time in 36 years that they've yeah. reached the knockout stage. Now, look, we can't expect way too much more from them, but confidence will be high now. They'll be expecting at least possibly, depending on who they get in the in that last 16, Maybe yeah. they can go at least to the quarterfinals. Do you think so? Uh, I think a, a playoff is a uh, is a matter of luck, uh, isn't it, Imran? Like we have, we have seen in World Cups, these smaller teams come and uh, they knock out some biggies, uh, possibly who are still not in the perfect run, but somehow make it to the next stage. So I think uh, uh, they have a very good chance, and this is probably the second time in the history we are entering the playoffs, isn't it? Uh, the previous one was nineteen eighty six. Uh, That's uh, right. Is what I remember. Yeah. So, yeah. I think uh, anything is possible in a playoff, whether it be it uh, any sport you look at, uh, especially uh, they have come with a very uh, strong performance. Uh, topping the group, they must be really confident. So, I'm sure uh, they can uh, come up with some surprise and get into the quarterfinals. Uh, and obviously, it will be a big uh, a boost for the country. It'll be another shock, but this tournament has been full of shocks. And don't forget, guys, now the last 16 will be having extra time and penalties. So yeah. literally anything can happen and teams like Morocco may find themselves going even further into the tournament. Right, there's four games tomorrow to look forward to, starting with Cameroon and Brazil. Now, Sean, we know Brazil are already through. They're going to be resting, you know, a whole number of players. But that attack in that squad is so strong, even with the, you know, first 11 rested, the next 11 coming in are going to be just as strong. <laughs> <laughs>
Absolutely. I mean, I see Brazil is the envy of every single side in this tournament. Simply man for man, they have an even better replacement warming the bench. So, I mean, irrespective of who rests, I mean, it should still be the first level for them. So, I mean, Cameroon, given their wonderful performance in the previous game, I think despite the energy and the running, I think it will not be a match for Brazil tomorrow. Yeah, I agree. The other two games are Serbia, Switzerland, and Ghana, and Uruguay. But Satish, South Korea and Portugal. Now, obviously, we're all going to be looking to that game to see how uh, Ronaldo does in that match. But uh, do you think uh, we might not expect play, something it, extraordinary from him tomorrow? Uh, he might not play, isn't it? Because there are too many matches in the in the near future and Portugal probably with the play secured. Maybe they might rest him also. But should he play, I'm sure uh, all eyes will be on him. And I'm sure he will also come and try to prove a point and say that, OK, guys, I'm still... Uh, the the old uh, self, you no, know, like the pride which he can show. Uh, so, yeah, that, that that's that's going to be a good one, uh, of course. Uh, when uh, Portugal is meeting, uh, 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 let, uh, let, let me let uh, me yeah, uh, Korea, Korea, South Korea, isn't? It? Yeah. Imran, yes, sure. Uh, let me add that that I, I am sure Ronaldo will play tomorrow. Person. Simply because Ronaldo is, he cannot be benched. See, he is the number one player and he is beyond anybody's dictate. So he will have that. Remember, he is chasing, he's, it is his last World Cup and he's still chasing records. He is, still needs one goal to, Absolutely. Your, to your equal Eusebio's number of, number of World Cup goals. So he's not going to rest. Remember, Absolutely. he even claimed one goal last, the last match. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I believe so, Sham, someone like him. And if he is benched, and we've seen what he's done when he was at Man United, he may walk off. <laughs> That'll be a huge story. So we'll all see how those games on, uh, get on tomorrow. That's all from the guys. In the meantime, head to golfnews.com for all the latest news and check us out on our social media channels. Thank you and good night.